What's up, Met fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets to Rob. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing good. Before I get started talking about the home opener at Clover Park yesterday, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy my content, like my videos, you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Big things are going to happen. Hit that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So yesterday was the Mets home opener for their spring training uh, season, so to speak. So with the current COVID situations, obviously everyone knows that it wasn't a packed ballpark. It wasn't the atmosphere that you usually see in the opening game uh, of spring training. The seven line on the berm, full crowd in the seats. There was a lot of rules, a lot of changes that were there. But at the end, the game was still fun. Fans are still cheering. Heard a couple of Let's Go Mets chants. There was a lot of things that you can take out of it, especially when you couldn't go to a game in over a year and a baseball game specifically, a Met game specifically, over the last year. And it was nice to actually go into a baseball game live and hear the fans and the atmosphere, Looking, watch, watching the players uh, warm up before the game. The intros, it was just a lot of nice things to see. It was great to see. It was nice to see fans in the ballpark at a Mets game. The last Met game I went to was the last game of the season of 2019 when Dom hit that game-winning home run against the Braves. That was the last time I was at a baseball game. The last sporting event I went to was an XFL game right before COVID hit. In the middle of February, I went to a XFL New York Guardians game in New Jersey at MetLife Stadium. And that was the last professional sporting event I went to before COVID hit. So it was a great, great experience to be back at the ballpark. I know all you guys can agree that it was great to see fans in the stands at a Met game. It was great to see. I know you guys probably loved it too. A lot of people couldn't go come down to spring training this year because of COVID, which is understandable. Luckily enough, I was able to. I'm enjoying myself in Port St. Lucie. It was a real good time. So we're going to get right into the game recap of yesterday's game. So yesterday, as you know, Marcus Stroman started the game for the New York Mets. He was very good. And I'm one of the biggest critics of Marcus Stroman. I've said it in many of my videos. Uh, I say it on social media. I'm one of his biggest critics. He talks a Cy Young game, but he does he hasn't pitched like it at all wearing a Mets jersey. And not that I'm not rooting for him. I'm definitely rooting for him. He has the Mets jersey on. I root for all the players. But I just never felt like he was a guy that talked so much and never backed up his game and his pitching on the mound. He did it with Toronto, but when he's been a Met, he hasn't. He's talked a lot. He act, he talks like he, he's won the Cy Young, and he hasn't. But yesterday, I don't know if it's a contract year because he's, he's pitching so well or he's ready for the season. He looked like he was in midseason form yesterday. Now, I know he topped out at 92, 93 miles an hour, but in person, watching Strowman, his fastball looked a lot faster than 92, 93. He was gunning it to the plate. He looked really good. His slider was sharp. His slider was tight. It had late break. It was had late break going into lefties, uh, late break uh, going outside the righties. It was a really good – he just pitched really well. He seemed like he was pitching in the middle of the season. And he had a couple of starts under his belt. He looked absolutely dominant. I know it's spring training. I know it's his first start. I know it's the second game of the season for uh, teams. Or one first game of the season for teams. It was – it's still nice to see. And if we can get that type of Marcus Stroman for the season, he's going to be a dangerous number three starter in this rotation. And he pitched really well. And when you look at Strowman's line, he pitched two innings. He had two strikeouts, no walks, no earned runs. 
he was he pitched very good, and I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised. Uh, granted, it was spring training; it was his first uh, first game starting, but at the end of the day, he looked good, and hopefully, he can, you know, continue this throughout the spring and into the season. That was nice to see. Uh, after Stroman, uh, it was Yamamoto that came in. Uh, he pitched two innings, gave up two hits, one strikeout. He was pretty good. He's another one that uh, has a sneaky fastball as well. He looked pretty good also. So it's another person that can be a spot starter, possibly for the fifth rota- uh, the fifth spot in rotation uh, other than Peterson. You never know. It, it really depends. You know, I know we got time on Walker also, but Yamamoto can actually start – and be the fifth starter if Peterson doesn't show up in spring training as well. But Yamamoto looked good yesterday as well. And looking at the next pitcher that pitched after Yamamoto and Showman was Jerry Blevins, an old-time uh, friend uh, that I met many times over the years in spring training. Very nice guy. It's nice to see him back in a Mets uniform. He pitched okay. He pitched one in, gave up one hit. Had a couple of men on base, and he struck out one guy, but he got out of it. He looked good. You know, Jerry Blevins can be an interesting piece if he can make the major league team. He's on a minor league uh, deal right now, but he also can be another lefty in the bullpen that we desperately need. Yes, we got loop. That's fine. But at the end of the day, Blevins can be an interesting uh addition to this major league team and this bullpen if he shows that he can still pitch in the major leagues. And hopefully, you know, as a guy that really enjoys and likes Blevins, I hope he makes the team. And next up was Drew Smith. He pitched well. He pitched one in and didn't have no strikeouts. Didn't give him no home runs, no hits. He looked good. Obviously, he has a really hard-thrown fastball. Very good pitcher. We've seen him a couple of years already. Uh, come out of the bullpen. He should be able to make this bullpen, hopefully. But, you know, obviously we have to see what he does during the spring. There's other people that can step up. And there's one guy that I really want to talk about, and that's Mick Williams. He saved the game for the Mets. Sam Mick Williams is a piece that can really be an interesting look and addition to this bullpen. I mean, his fastball was electric. His slider was insane. He also has a changeup, as well as a curveball. This McWilliams kid can be a steal of the offseason when it comes to a guy that the Mets picked up. And the, he was a, he, he, he pitched for the Rays. But this kid is, I mean, electric. His fastball was, I mean, Banging that catcher's mitt. It was just insane how good he can be. And if he can stick with his control and look really well in the spring, I think he could be a piece that they can answer the bullpen. And Lord knows we need guys in a bullpen because we don't trust Familia. We don't trust Batanzas. Who knows about Edwin Diaz? May I trust a couple of guys? Loop is a veteran, so I can trust him. There's not a lot of guys in his bullpen that we can really trust right now until Lugo comes back. And McWilliams can be that piece that, who knows, he can be a late inning guy. You just don't know. He's got the stuff. We know that. McWilliams can be an interesting addition to this bullpen for sure. When it comes to the offense and the, the run scored yesterday, it was two guys. It was Jeff McNeil and it was Albert Amaro Jr. Both of them hit solo home runs. Jeff McNeil hit a home run in the second inning to right field. It was a shot. It went past the berm near the concession stand. It, it was a bomb. And McNeil looks like he's in the midseason form as well. He had he really good at bats. He was strong. He looked good. Albert Amaro Jr., that home run he hit the left center field. When he hit that ball, the sound off his bat 
was, I mean, extremely loud in this in, in at Clover Park. It was loud, and it was a shot. He hit it to left center field. It was a long home run. And when I watched the replay on TV, this, Amora can be an, a very surprising piece to this Mets team. You know, we poo-pooed it when we signed him. And, you know, with the whole Bradley situation and Springer situation, Nemo probably played in center field if there's no DH. If Amora can show power like that, and we know he was a, you know, a first-round pick. Uh, a couple of years ago with the Cubs. And they expected big things from him. But he's only 26 years old, 27 years old. If he could find it, and he and what Gary Cohen said on the broadcast when I found out when I got home and I watched it when I recapped the game, that he's working out with Manny Machado in Miami, uh, Almora Jr. So maybe he is coming into his own. Maybe the Mets can finally get lucky and sign in one of these guys. Maybe – it can be a Justin Turner to the Dodgers situation with Almar Jr. to the Mets. I like the kid. We know he's good defensively. That's no doubt. But if he can hit, man, can he play center field every day for this Mets team. And if you get a DH, it's even better. You can put Nimmo on left, Dom at first, Alonzo as a DH. That would be great. But we have to see more from Almora offensively for him to start every day in center field. With, and with Jeff McNeil, we know what he is. He's a gritty guy, uh, you know, works at bats. But he seems like he figured out the power in his bat. And we've seen it uh, in 2019 uh, in the second half. He was more of a power hitter than he was a contact hitter in the first half of 2019. In 2020, he struggled a little bit, but he found it too with more power. Contact wasn't as great, but he's a 290, 295 hitter for sure, 300 hitter, Jeff McNeil. But it seems like he's working his way to uh, get, uh, hitting more home runs and working that power into his arsenal offensively. He's probably going to be the number two hitter, maybe. But uh, if you look at the lineup yesterday, I know everybody didn't play. But McNeil batted a little deeper in the lineup behind Conforto. So, and Lindor batted second. So, I think McNeil can be a, a perfect number two hitter. But if he's going to show power like that, you never know. Maybe he'll move uh, back in the lineup a little bit to maybe the fifth spot that he hit yesterday. But Jeff McNeil, Al Moore Jr. were only two runs of the game. Two solo home runs. It was nice to see. Really great to have baseball back with the fans. Really great to see. It was beautiful weather yesterday. It was perfect. Looking at the box score, the recap the game, the Astros uh, zero, the Mets two. Four hits for the Astros, five hits for the Mets, one error for the Astros. Stroman got the win. McWilliams got the save. Really great to see. I'm so glad to be back at games. Hopefully we can continue to be back at games when COVID rates go down. Hopefully, opening day can have a lot more fans than probably 20%. Hopefully, we get 25%, 30%. That would be awesome. We can get about 10,000 fans, hopefully, in the ballpark at City Field for opening day. It's going to be great. Thank God I'm back at the, the baseball game, at the Mets game. Great to have fans back. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my videos, want to see more content, want to see big things happening to my channel, Talking Mets and Rob, subscribe to my channel, everybody. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.